Somebody was covered with excrement, a tit or mud. There he's permitted to remove that area, the dirt from that area, normally in normal fashion, he doesn't have to be concerned. And a woman who has to feed her child that she doesn't want to feed it, make it uh, the bread, uh, feed it without washing her hands, so she can wash one hand, and he says, it's Latina, because she can give bread to her child. So let's go down and learn the Pirush. The Magen Avram says, be careful only to do it in the place which is dirty, as we find the Rambam, the place itself. And a woman can wash her hand. This is in Yuma, in 77b. Abshim Yamil says, a woman washes her hand in water and gives bread. The Gemara says the reason is because of Rambam, we should shifta. And what's shifta? And there's two explanations for that. According to Rashi, it's a Ruach Ra, which is on the hands, that if you didn't wash them in the morning, Yom Kippur, he permitted her to wash her hands in order to feed the children, because otherwise it'd be, it's a danger for the child. The Taisas disagree, and they're of the opinion that you can wash your hands in chakras anyway, as we do, uh, because otherwise you can't touch your nostrils or your, or your mouth. His, his eyes or, or his ears and uh, what's what, what there is uh, those are things you have to wash therefore Rabbi Tam says that the, the, this evil ruach is on the food when we give bread to a child and he might choke if he doesn't wash her hand that's what we're talking about Rabbi Tam adds today this Allah doesn't apply because we don't have this ruach run in our areas and therefore, we're not marked either on, on water that has been left uncovered, and also the number of uh, things shouldn't be done in two pieces, two slices of bread, or two drinks of water. In the tour, it has the halacha that where you do have these things, uh, therefore, when you give it uh, to a child, you can wash uh, every time. And today, we don't have that ruach uh, ra, that evil spirit, amongst us. And as we explained from Rabbi and Tom, and everybody washes their hands anyway in the morning. And the tour also says that aloha is you can wash your hands in the morning because that's considered like being dirty. Yosef brings many of the Rishonim, like who agree with the tour, like Rabbi and Tom, that you can wash your hands in the morning, and therefore you can wash your hands in the morning. Lecha Mishnah points out in the Gemara, we find. In Shabbos 109a, Tani we learned, Abnazar says, Baschayon Uzu, this Umak Pedes, the Ruach that's on the hand is, 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 is very stringent about itself. Raji explains, explains that you have to be careful to wash it, water on it three times on each hand. And so the Shabbat says, that you, have to, you have to rinse each hand three times. To take off the ruach ra, this evil spirit that's on the hands. But the Rambam and Perik Dalad, doesn't mention you have to wash your hands three times. It would seem he's of the opinion that today you don't have this evil spirit, therefore you don't have to wash three times. It's enough one time. The question, the Commissioner questions this: How the Rambam permit a woman to wash one hand on shachos to feed a child if he says there's no ruach ra, and he remains with a question. In Taizim Kippur, the Sefer, in Yuma, on Yuma 77b, he clarifies the opinion of the Rambam, because in Tefillah, the Rambam writes, in Yom Kippur and Tishabov, you don't make a brocha on the chakras on washing your hand, since you don't wash your hands. And he disagrees with Rambam time, and those who say you can wash your hands on Yom Kippur and Tishabov in the morning, because of the evil spirit that hovers over the hands. Now, Therefore, according to the Rambam, it's because she didn't wash her hands in the morning. Like Rashi there, the Rambam is of the opinion that each woman does not have to wash her hands three times. It's enough once to take off the Ruach Ra. And even though the Gemara writes that it does not go away, the evil uh, spirit, we, only three times. Taizah Yom Kippur says that the Rambam is of the opinion, save Taizah Yom Kippur, it says that the Rambam is of the opinion 
uh, Chom disagree with Rav Nosson of the opinion that one time is enough. And therefore, in Perek Dalot the Tzvila, the Rambam doesn't write that he needs to do it three times, because it's enough once. Why doesn't the Rambam permit to wash your hands in the morning and keep it like a man Tam, the two and Shavon Oroch, even though in Shabbos Kuf Ches 108b, you, it's written that you shouldn't touch your hands, your eyes, before you wash your hands, because otherwise it can cause blindness. So the Kippur answers that the Rambam is of the opinion that that's a, in, that that itself is only one individual's thoughts, and we see as we see in the Gemara Yuma 77b that only regarding food they permit washing their hands. In Shulchan in 613. The halacha uh, is that a person can wash his hands in the morning and he makes the bracha until he's dying. Should be careful not to do so until the enti- it's a wrist, but rather only till the knuckles. The more adds that he shouldn't have intent to benefit or enjoy the washing only for the purpose of removing this spirit from the hands. <coughs> the choyle, Ram continues, a sick person, he, he can wash his hands in normal fashion, even though he is not in danger. We learned this from the din. Somebody who had uh, cracks of his skin in his head, he can put on oil, and he doesn't have to worry about uh, transgressing. This is the Erevan 77b, and certainly it's a, a sick person that's not in danger can, is permitted to wash it. Wash. Rabbi Menachem writes, the reason is because he doesn't mean it for the benefit of enjoyment, and the whole forbiddenness is because of enjoyment. The Shulchan Aruch <coughs> left this out, and the Moor does add it in his comments. Now we go into the question of the Raman continues. All those have to go to the mikveh. Because they're Tome, Toyo, and Kedak, and they can go to the mikveh. Baby Tishab, Baby Yamakipur, and whether it's Tishab, Baby Yamakipur, we're talking here about a cold uh, mikveh. This is a disagreement of, of Tanoim and Tainus 13a. The Ram codifies the Aloha, like the Tanakamo, not like a Panina Skanakayanim, who forbades going to the mikveh. Hagoras Maimonis writes that the reen of the Bali Taisus codifies the Aloha, Kav Panina Skanakayanim. He says, Kedayu, uh, the basic uh, Mikdash is worthy to not go to the Mikdash. <coughs> <coughs> Therefore, it's forbidden to go to the Mikdash on the night of the Tishra. In Kippur, you can go to the Mikdash even according to Abchanino. And the Agus Maimonish questions that maybe the Ram Pask is like Abchanino on Yom Kippur, because he doesn't mention in the Tisha B'Av whether you can go to the Mikvah or not. Only on Yom Kippur, he says you're allowed to go to the Mikvah, which would seem to be because of the reasoning of Hanin uh, and that because of the base of Mikdash, one should not go on Yom Tisha B'Av in any case. The two and the Tisha B'Av writes in the foolish, and anyone who has, is obligated to go to the Mikvah can do so. But it's Tisha B'Av Yom Kippurim. So he permits Yom Kippur. And he permits Tisha B'Av. But in the Yom Kippur, the Torah brings down a disagreement. And he writes, according to the Baal Ha'avuz uh, the everyone goes to the Mikveh on Yom Kippur. I mean, that w- those who have to. I mean, Tom, you do not go to the Mikveh. When it says, what does it mean all those have to go to the Mikveh do so? That's only according to the one who says that Tfilo Bizman or Mitzvah. There's a, a disagreement as to whether if you're obligated to go to the Mikvah, you should go as soon as you can, or you can wait. And since we codify the Aloha that it's not obligatory, therefore they can wait till the next day. So according to Rabbi Tam, the question is whether one is permitted to, in general, even if you're obligated to go on Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, it would be dependent on the question whether one is obligated to go at the time that the first possibility of, of the mitzvah or not. And he doesn't differentiate between Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, the, as did the Agurus Maimonis. According to this, the Rambam, who states here that, that those who are obligated to go can do so, uh, both on the ninth of Av and Yom Kippur, is of the opinion that Tzvila at its time is an obligation. The Beis Yosef, at the end of the Simon 613, explains, um, it mentions 
the words of Tosis, the Hananel is, is the opinion like the Allah's Gedolus, that many times disagrees. He says that the Rambam here codifies Allah like the Allah's Gedolus, that you do go to the Mikvah. The Tosis and Beya have the opinion that even the one who says that Tzvila at its time is a mitzvah, today women do not go to the Mikvah, even if it's the night that they, they would normally go, neither in Yom Kippur nor Tisha B'Av. Beishesha writes that so we find in Simon 5.54, the name of the Marik, she, we never saw somebody going to the mikvah in days of mourning, certainly not in Kippur and Tisha B'av. And that's our premise, that a woman does not go to the mikvah, not in Tisha B'av, and not in Kippur. Let me ask questions. In other words, you say, the Ram writes, if there was a name of Hashem written on someone's flesh, that person is not allowed to go to the, into the water because it will erase it and he can't put on, smear himself with oil in that place because it will erase it and he can't stay in a place which is considered unclean because he has the Shem Hashem there. If he has to go to the mikveh, what does he do? He covers it with something. If he doesn't find something to cover it with, he puts a garment on it, but he shouldn't make it very tight because otherwise he doesn't tie them. The rule for this din is found in Shabbos 120b. The other Tanakhama obviously disagree. Tanakhama is the opinion shed that you put on it a this gummy, a piece of uh, grass, and immerse oneself to try to attempt not to have it uh, be erased. Obviously, is the opinion that he goes and and immerse himself normally. Gemara says. That if he has this grass, everyone says you put it on. But this agreement is only when he doesn't have it. Tanakam is of the opinion, since you have to do it at the proper time. And it's not an uh, obligation at the time. Therefore, you have to find gumi. Otherwise, you can't go to the mikvah. Basically, it's the opinion that it's an obligation. Therefore, you don't have to go for it if you don't have it. But if you have it, you should put it on. In the case of Mishnah writes that the Hamam agrees with the Tanakama that he has to go after gumi. If that's the case, the Hamam is of the opinion. That tefillah at, uh, at the proper time is not a mitzvah. And here he writes that they do go to the mikvah, both on Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, which would seem to be because he feels it is a mitzvah. And uh, this would seem to contradict each other. The Lecha Mishnah answers that the Ramam's opinion is, 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 is as it says in Hilkos Yisrael Yatayra, like the Tanakh Kama, that you, uh, it is no set time for it. What he says here is that they go to the mikveh and Yom Kippur is not because it's an obligatory immersion, but even according to the, the one who says Tzvila Vazman is not a mitzvah, it would, it would go to the mikveh. And so the Torah says in Bayan 18b, and Torah says in Shabbos 121a, and where do they prove it from? From a Brisa. In Yuma, that uh, it's written that all those who go to the mikveh do it by day, except for Nida and the woman who gives birth. They, they, when their time comes to go to the mikveh, they go at night. The Valkyrie goes to the mikveh until Mincha. Why the Valkyrie doesn't go after you praise Mincha? Because uh, the t- doing it that day is not an obligation. Even so, the Dan is of the opinion that everyone who has an obligation to, to immerse oneself in a mikvah should do so that day. Even the Tommy May, the Tommy Sheretz, that do not have to go to, to mikvah to Davin, still they should do so. That we find that according to the Maniyama, Tfilu's Mana is not an obligation, meaning you don't have to do it that day, but they have permission to do so even on Yom Kippur. What's the reason? As the Rachel says, to have more purification, even though it's not a mitzvah. And uh, see what we will write with this regard in Halokha Gimel.